The top stories tonight in Y News. The Marcos administration braces for the impending La Nina in the country. The Anatan Israel coalition plans to push through with civilian mission despite China's tightened aggression in the West Philippine Sea. Some passengers embark on their journeys as early as today, seeking to evade the anticipated surge in travelers tomorrow amid the holiday rush. And we will discover why the United Nations called for an immediate ceasefire between Israel and the Palestinian militants. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Tuesday, March 26, 2024. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am Marvi Delfin. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media channel. I am Oralyn Quijano. First in the news, former presidential spokesperson Harry Roque confirmed that there was an agreement between China and former President Rodrigo Duterte during his tenure regarding a union show. Meanwhile, the planned civilian mission of the Ating Ito coalition in the West Philippine Sea, particularly in Scarborough Shoal, will push through despite China's heightened aggression against the Philippine resupply mission at a union show. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. Former presidential spokesperson Harry Roque has confirmed the existence of an agreement between China and the Philippines under former President Rodrigo Duterte's administration regarding Ayungin Shoal. According to the lawyer, this is not a secret agreement but rather a gentleman's agreement. And although it is not a treaty or a written agreement, the two countries agreed to maintain the status quo in the disputed territory. This means that repair supplies will not be brought to the BRP Sierra Madre and no further improvements will be made to structures built by China in the area. Nang kasunduan nila, status quo. Walang mm -hmm. gagalaw, walang maggagawa ng kahit anong improvements at uh, walang magiging problema. So pagdating ko sa ayungin, ang usapan talaga dahil dito sa status quo agreement ng Pilipinas at ng China sa panahon ni dating Presidente Rodrigo Roa Duterte, tubig at pagkailangan dadalin doon sa mm -hmm. um, Sierra Madre. No? Pero ang reklamo ng mga China ngayon ay uh, taliwas doon sa laging kasunduan ng uh, nakaraan ay nagdadala sila ng mga uh, repair equipment no? para nga mm -hmm. ayusin daw yung uh, uh, Sierra Madre. Kaya ganyan mm -hmm. ang naging reaksyon ng China. The lawyer, however, denied that under the former Duterte administration, the reported promise of the Philippines to China to remove BRP Sierra Madre from a union shoal ever took place. Meanwhile, the Atinito coalition has no intention of canceling the planned second civilian mission in the West Philippine Sea, particularly at Scarborough Shoal or Bajo de Masinloc. This decision comes in the wake of China's escalated aggressions against the Philippine resupply mission at Ayungin Shoal. In the maritime incident that transpired last Saturday, March 23, three soldiers were injured after China Coast Guard ships used water cannons against the Philippine supply boat. According to Atinito convener Ed De La Torre, they expect more participants to join their second mission in the West Philippine Sea. Because of what the recent happening, Biglang may mga new uncertainties that have been brought into the planning. But the <laughs> point is, tuloy, it will not be uh, pushed back much longer than ano, into May. As of now, the group is thoroughly preparing and actively coordinating with government agencies. Atinito also plans to include international observers in their mission. Ay ayaw nating makadagdag sa escalation ng away. <laughs> ang gusto natin, ang gusto natin ang ma-put forward is ma-realize na we are standing on solid ground internationally in terms of law. This second mission, siguraduhin nating magkaroon ng international component. Let's invite observers and let's make sure that uh, it is well publicized in India. 
It was in December 2023 when Atinito conducted its first gift-giving mission in the West Philippine Sea, particularly aiming to reach out to the stationed Filipino soldiers at Ayungin Shoal and bring supplies for the frontliners. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Today on March 26, AFP Chief of Staff General Romeo Bronner Jr. embarked on a significant visit to personally meet with the soldiers wounded in the recent water cannon incident perpetrated by China. This incident occurred aboard an AFP resupply boat en route to Ayungan Shoal. The visit transpired at the Western Command in Puerto Princesa City, Palawan. During this poignant encounter, seven soldiers were honored with the Wounded Personnel Medal, while others received the Military Merit Medal. These brave individuals were stationed on the BRP Sierra Madre, steadfastly safeguarding our nation's territorial integrity. General Bronner's visit served a crucial purpose to bolster morale among AFP personnel amidst the challenges posed by China's aggressive actions. Despite the harassment faced, the injured soldiers expressed unwavering determination to return to the West Philippine Sea, resolute in their duty to protect our sovereign territory once they have recuperated. The AFP underscores the gravity of this incident, labeling it as not only the most perilous move by China against Philippine supply boats, but also the first attempt to completely obstruct a resupply mission. Despite the challenges encountered, the AFP affirms that the mission was partially successful. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has called for a meeting with select members of the cabinet to tackle the effects of El Nino phenomenon and the preparation of the government for the impending La Nina. Nel Maribohok reports. The El Nino phenomenon is expected to affect more provinces by May as there may be a longer dry season this year amid the strong weather phenomenon and the anticipated occurrence of its antithesis, La Nina. According to Department of Science and Technology or DOST Secretary Renato Solidum Jr., El Nino in the tropical Pacific continues to weaken and there is an increasing probability of La Nina by June. Although the... Uh... El Nino will transition to neutral by April, May, June 2024 season. There is also the increasing probability of La Nina at 62% in June, July, August season. Secretary Solidum, however, clarified that historically, pre-developing La Nina is characterized by below normal rainfall, which means the possibility of a slight delay of the onset of the rainy season is likely and its effects will combine with the effects of the ongoing El Nino phenomenon. According to Pag-asa Climate Monitoring and Prediction Chief Annalisa Solis, 13 to 16 typhoons are expected to enter the country this year. By this year, mga around 13 to 16 na bagyo po ang possible po this year. So, ibig sabihin po, paring below normal dahil yung mararamdaman po kasi natin yung possible effect ng La Nina is last quarter of the year. While there are provinces in the country that will be affected by the combined effects of the El Nino and La Nina phenomena, Secretary Solidum said the government will continue doing the El Nino operations but also keeping in mind the preparations for the La Nina phenomenon. Meanwhile, Secretary Solidum highlighted the creation of the El Nino Southern Oscillation Platform by DOST in collaboration with FIBOX and DOST Pagasa along with other government agencies that addresses five sectors such as food, water, health, public safety and energy. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The Bureau of Immigration, or BI, has deported two more members affiliated with the notorious syndicate known as the Luffy Gang Group, operating in Japan. Dante Amento tells us why. After being cleared with domestic cases in the Philippines, the government, through the Bureau of Immigration, deported today, March 26, two members of the notorious Luffy Group or Syndicate in Japan. They are identified as Sugano Kasushi and Shimuida Saito. However, they have still pending arrest warrants in Japan for involvement 
in large-scale telecom fraud whose victims are primarily senior citizens. Ang mga biktima nila ay nandun sa Japan. Um, initially, ang nalaman po natin that um, some of their main targets are senior citizens um, in Japan, which is really alarming um, uh, and, and a cause for concern for both the Philippine and the Japanese government. Immigration spokesperson Dana Sandoval has disclosed that both arrived in the country in 2019 and were subsequently arrested in 2023 and January 2024 respectively. Some Luffy gang members were deported back to Japan last year including the alleged leader of the group Luffy. Meanwhile, immigration is continuously looking for the other members of the group who are perhaps still in the country. We are still actually um, not closing our doors that there might be a possibility that there's still some uh, members of this syndicate that might be in the Philippines. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And for the news abroad, the United States and the United Kingdom have filed charges on Monday accusing China of cyber espionage, while Chinese diplomats dismissed the allegations as unjustified. Ani Mansilia will give us the details live. Yes, Annie, good evening. Good evening, Marvi. The United States and British authorities filed charges and imposed sanctions after accusing China of chi cyber espionage campaign on Monday, March 25. The cyber hacking presumably hit millions of people, which includes lawmakers, journalists, academics, and telecommunication companies. The U.S. and U.K. officials also nicknamed the hacking group as Advanced Persistent Threat 31 or APT-31, deeming in an arm of China's Ministry of State Security. According to Deputy U.S. Attorney General Lisa Monaco, the goal of the widespread hacking was to suppress critics of the Chinese administration, compromise government authorities, and steal trade secrets. Furthermore, according to the U.S. court prosecutors, the hacking resulted in confirmed and potential compromise of personal mails, work accounts, online storage, and phone call records of millions of Americans. British authorities said a second group of Chinese hackers attacked the U.K. Electoral Commission, compromising the data of millions more in the population. According to FBI Director Christopher Wray, this exposes China's continuous efforts to destabilize America's cybersecurity. However, Chinese diplomats in the U.S. and U.K. dismissed the allegations as an injustice and called the charges as fabrications and slanders. Meanwhile, both the U.S. and Britain imposed sanctions on what was said a Ministry of State Security front company tied to the hacking event while Australia and New Zealand joined to accuse China of the malicious hacking activity. Back to you, Marvi. Thank you, Annie Mansilia, reporting live from Singapore. A New York judge finalized on Monday former President Donald Trump's trial date for April 15th. In addition to a civil fraud case, this upcoming trial will tackle Trump's criminal hush money case, potentially complicating his bid for the White House on November 5th. The multiple, the multiple cases highlight the legal perils Trump faces as he aims to defeat Democratic President Joe Biden. Trump's legal team asserted that the hush money payment was to spare embarrassment and not sway the election. Meanwhile, the upcoming trials could significantly impact Trump's ability to court swing voters and maintain his political momentum. We'll share more global stories with you later. For those watching our live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok.
Some passengers embark on their journeys as early as today, seeking to evade the anticipated surge in travelers tomorrow amid the holiday rush. JP Nunez will tell us why. Tomorrow, March 27, a bustling crowd of vacation goers is expected in different provincial bus terminals in Cubao, Quezon City. Due to this, as early as today, March 26, some passengers have opted to travel early to avoid the holiday rush. Mas maganda mo may ngayon sir para hindi masyadong traffic at maraming tao. Mayroon magipagsiksikan. Ayaw namin ng siksikan niya. Tsaka mga sinyo kami, ayaw namin ng siksikan, yung habulan. Totally, bukas po sana yung biyahe ko talaga. Sabi po ng ate ko, ah, ngayon ka na bimiyahe para hindi mo maranasan yung Nung nakaraang New Year po kasi, isang araw ako nagantay dito bago nakasakay. So sabi niya, ngayon ka na para hindi siksikan. As of today, terminals in Cubao are still uncrowded. Walk-in passengers can easily take a trip to their provinces. Pagbaba na yung dyan, meron na mga dispatcher. Nagtanong kami kung meron bus na papuntang concept yan. Tapos eh, dito kami din na lang. Maluwag pa sila, kaya madaling makasakay ngayon. Meanwhile, the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA has reported that among the 65 bus drivers from 5 Star Terminal, Baliwag Terminal, and Genesis Terminal all tested negative for drug tests conducted by the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency or PDEA. The MMDA issues a stern warning to the public against patronizing colorum vehicles. These unauthorized and unregulated vehicles pose significant risks to passengers, ranging from safety concerns to potential criminal activities. Iba dyan, walang insurance, na aksidente, hindi wala tayong kasiguruhan na may sasagot na insurance sa kanila. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Baguio City Mayor Benjamin Magalong has issued a stern warning against scammers preying on tourists seeking accommodation services in the city. Mayor Magalong emphasized that the city is actively collaborating with the anti-cybercrime group of the Philippine National Police to track down and identify these scammers, ensuring they face appropriate sanctions. With the advent of the long holiday, Mayor Magalong noted a surge in scams, both online and otherwise, targeting tourists. Many of these fraudsters pose as agents affiliated with legitimate establishments, even going as far as posting advertorials on social media pages with downloaded photos and information of genuine establishments without the owner's knowledge. These scammers commonly request reservation fees or down payments only to block customers after receiving payment, leaving them in distress. A recent victim of such a scam is actor Derek Ramsey, who reported being defrauded by the social media page Camp John Hay Forest Homes Cabin, boasting 11,000 followers. The incident has been reported to the Baguio City Police Office Anti-Cybercrime Unit for investigation, alongside other online scamming complaints. Mayor Magalong advised tourists to exercise extreme caution when transacting with individuals and to verify their legitimacy before agreeing to any deal or making payments. For tourist safety, the City Tourism Operations Office recommended transacting only with accommodation establishments listed under visita.bagyo.gov.ph. The Philippine National Police has undergone a recent reorganization with five senior officials receiving new posts just a day before the retirement of PNP Chief Police General Benjamin Accorda Jr. Among the officers affected by the reshuffle are Police Major General Benjamin Stila Jr., formerly from the Civil Security Group who has been reassigned to Area Police Command Eastern Mindanao. Police Brigadier General Alan Nobleza, the former Director of Police Regional Office in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region, who has been transferred to the Victor Directorate for Information and Communication Technology Management. Director Neil Alinsangan of, of the ICTM, who has been appointed to the new Director of the Civil Security Group. 
Police General Praxi Pangawon, previously the Director of Communication and Electronic Service, who has been appointed as the Director of ProBar. Senior Executive Assistant Police General Christopher Abrahano, who has been appointed as the new Director of the PNT Aviation Security Group. This reshuffle takes place today, March 26, 2024. Today, March 26, marked the commencement of the National ID Registration in select barangays in Quezon City. For many residents, this initiative comes as a great relief. No longer do they have to endure the inconvenience of traveling to distant locations for registration. Jed Neresina tells us why. For mothers like Gail Aldea Villamor and Regine Zamora, it is more convenient to have national ID registration in their barangay, with representatives from the Philippine Statistics Authority or PSA. They said they no longer have to go far just to register. It's convenient for us because we don't have to go to the UP town. We registered for the national ID when we were here in UP town. Now, we're just here in our place. We're just here to register. We're just here to register. It's just easier and more easier. babiyahe po kasi masyado din po ano sa ano malayo po if ever na ano sila sa UP town or minsan kasi may kubaw they also registered their children age 1 to 4 years old for them to have a record and ID that can be used in the future para po may ano habang bata pa po siya may ID na rin siya kagaya din po naman para din po maano siya magkaroon po siya ng ID, ID po, tsaka makasama din po siya sa parang indigenous yung mapabilang po sa bilang ng tao dito po sa parcel. It is a great comfort to the public to have national ID registration in their area. According to Barangay Loyola Heights, Quezon City Chairman Darwin Hayes, the residents do not have to travel far to register, so this is a great help to them. Kung sa barangay nga lang eh, nalalayuan na sila, eh doon pa kaya sa community nila. So talagang malaking tulong, kumbaga hindi na sila mamamasahe pa, hindi na sila maglalakad pa ng malayo. Kumbaga, uh, lalakarin na lang nila, uh, ten step away lang sa bahay nila, eh magkakaroon na sila ng IDs. Yun. So malaking tulong ko talaga kung nandun na talaga sa community. This is also the view of the chairman of the Barangay Obrero Quezon City, Jose Segundo. He said that the visit of the PSA representatives to communities also help in responding to other problems of residents in their barangay. Ganda yung pagpunta ng PSB dito kasi parang hindi na sila pupunta doon sa opisina ng PSB. At bukod pa dyan, talagang... Marami rin nagtatanong na yung mga ID nila doon sa umiikot-ikot ay eh, nung pag-iikot nila hanggang ngayon wala pa. Yan ang problema dito sa aming barangay. PSA continues to encourage parents to join steps to further streamline the process and services of the government through the registration of their children. Jed Neresina, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And in other global news, France has issued its highest terror alert warning following a recent attack on a concert hall near Moscow, Russia this past Friday, March 22nd. According to French Prime Minister Gabriel Attal's post on the social media platform X, the decision came after the Islamic State group claimed responsibility for the Moscow attack which resulted in the deaths of at least 137 individuals. France remains on high security alert as it prepares for the upcoming 2024 Olympics and Paralympics in Paris. This latest alert adds to a series of terror attacks that have occurred in France, including the Batacalan Concert Hall Massacre in 2015. The United States has chosen not to vote on the United Nations Security Council's demand for a Gaza ceasefire. Paul Gatchelian tells us why. 
The United Nations Security Council called for an immediate ceasefire between Israel and the Palestinian militants on Monday, March 25, with 14 council members voting in favor for the resolutions, the U.S. abstaining to vote. The resolution was proposed by 10 of the elected members of the body, calling for the unconditional release of all hostages, to which UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez stated must be implemented and failure to do so would be unforgivable. Additionally, the failure of the United States to veto the resolution was described as a clear retreat in their original position. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said, in a response by the White House spokesperson John Kirby, he stated that the United States vote does not symbolize a shift in their policy and that nothing has changed. Meanwhile, with famine in Gaza rising, predicted to occur in May, the United Nations is urging Israel to leave the obstacles which are preventing humanitarian aid to enter Palestine. Paul Gachalian, UNTB News and Rescue, we serve the people. We give glory to God. Millions of residents in Johannesburg, South Africa are feeling the strain of a severe water shortage impacting their daily lives. Contrary to what one may expect, the primary cause of this water shortage isn't a declared drought. While the intense heat exacerbated by climate change has led to heightened water consumption among residents, a major underlying cause of this crisis lies in the city's infrastructure issues, long complained about by the citizens awaiting government action. Apart from the persistent leaks left unaddressed, residents also point fingers at the slow response and poor management by the government in tackling the city's recurring problems. Meanwhile, according to reports from the National Department of Water and Sanitation, a staggering 40% of water consumption in the city is wasted due to leaks and burst pipes. In response, local city officials have called for increased water conservation efforts and repairs of household leaks. Despite the challenges, some residents remain hopeful that the water supply crisis will be revol resolved soon. Heavy rainfall in the southeastern part of Brazil, particularly in Rio de Janeiro, Petropolis, and a significant portion of the Espirito Santo region has triggered landslides and mudslides, resulting in the tragic loss of nearly 27 lives. Recorded rainfall of nearly 20 millimeters per hour since Friday until Sunday has surpassed the monthly average of 250 millimeters in the area, exacerbating the situation. Despite the relentless downpour, extensive rescue operations persist to evacuate stranded individuals and address the aftermath of collapsed houses. Meanwhile, the Iberian Peninsula experiences unusually high temperatures exceeding the typical 30 degrees Celsius average daytime temperatures in southern Spain. Even in the eastern part of Andalusia, Temperatures remain no longer than are no lower than 24 degrees Celsius. However, temperatures in Spain and Portugal are expected to decrease in the coming weeks due to a brewing low pressure system in the northeastern Atlantic. This system may bring cold winds and potential snowfall in the Pyrenees and central parts of Spain. Additionally, a low pressure area has been observed in the northeastern part of Central America. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. Arkasang Bahai As the world faces these trying times amid the various challenges and uncertainties, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity. Good day. I'm Brother Eli Soriano of the members of the Church of God International. I want to invite you to join us in a minute of prayer every day to pray for humanity and the whole world as we go through these perilous times. While safety measures like washing of hands and strengthening of our immune systems may help us through this horrible predicament, there is still no precaution or cure more 
powerful than God's mighty intervention. And we need His intervention now more than ever. It doesn't matter what religion you are in or what denomination you belong. This is an invitation for all the people around the world who cares for the future of their family, friends, loved ones, and humanity as a whole. Everybody is welcome to pray with us. For more details, you can check out the description box below. Thank you very much and I hope to hear from you soon. May God bless you. close, we will leave you with the word giving glory to God. From the book of John, chapter 1, verse 29, it says, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Those are the reasons behind the news, March 26, 2024. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Oral Quijano, live from Toronto, Canada. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am Marvi Delfin, live from Australia. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Nang kasunduan nila, status ko. Walang mm-hmm. gagalaw, walang maggagawa ng kahit anong improvements, at uh, walang magiging problema. So pagdating mm-hmm. ko sa ayungin, ang usapan talaga dahil dito sa status ko agreement ng Pilipinas at ng China sa panahon ni dating Presidente Rodrigo Roa Duterte, tubig at pagkailangan dadalin doon sa mm-hmm. um, Sierra Madre. No? Pero ang reklamo ng mga China ngayon ay... Uh, taliwas doon sa naging kasunduan nung uh, nakaraan ay nagdadala sila ng mga uh, repair equipment no para nga mm-hmm. ayusin daw yung uh, uh, Sierra Madre kaya ganyan ang naging reaction ng China Although the uh, El Nino will transition to neutral by April May June 2024 season there is also the increasing probability of La Nina at 62% in June July August season by this year, mga around 13 to 16 na bagyo po ang possible po this year. So, ibig sabihin po, paring below normal dahil yung mararamdaman po kasi natin yung possible effect ng La Nina is last quarter of the year. Ang mga biktima nila ay nandun sa Japan. Um, initially, ang nalaman po natin that um, some of their main targets are senior citizens um, in Japan, which is really alarming um, uh, and, and a cause for concern for both the Philippine and the Japanese government. Iba dyan, walang insurance, na aksidente, hindi wala tayong kasiguruhan na may sasagot na insurance sa kanila. Mas maganda mo may ngayon, sir, para hindi masyadong traffic at maraming tao. Mayroon mag-ipagsiksikan. Ayaw namin ng siksikan niya. Tsaka mga sinyo kami, ayaw namin ng siksikan, yung habulan. Totally, bukas po sana yung biyahe ko talaga. Sabi po ng ate ko, ah, ngayon ka na bimiyahe para hindi mo maranasan yung, yung nakaraang New Year po kasi. Isang araw ako nagantay dito bago nakasakay. So sabi niya, ngayon ka na para hindi siksikan. Kung sa barangay nga lang eh, nalalayuan na sila, eh doon pa kaya sa community nila. So talaga malaking tulong. Kung maga hindi na sila mamamasahe pa, hindi na sila maglalakad pa ng malayo. Kung baga, uh, lalakari na lang nila, uh, ten step away lang sa bahay nila, eh magkakaroon na sila ng IDs. Yun. So malaking tulong ko talaga kung nandun na talaga sa community.